Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be running the game Nobody Saves the World on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So this is a Windows game and there is no Mac OS port, so I'm running this through the crossover compatibility layer. If you're new to the channel, please consider pressing the subscribe button. It really helps this channel out and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming news. So today I'm going to show you how to go ahead and install crossover and then get this working on your M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So the first step is going to be to click the link at the top of the description for my affiliate link for Crossover. If you do make a purchase through this link, then you'll be helping to support the channel and the work that I do. So once you get to the Crossover page, what you can do is to scroll down here and then you can click the Try Now button. And this is going to give you a 14 day free trial where you can test out the full functionality of Crossover. If you do decide to purchase, then please click my affiliate link and click the buy now button. If you use the coupon code Apple Gaming Wiki and click apply here, then you'll get a 25% discount off your crossover purchase. In this tutorial, I'm gonna be using the trial. So I'm gonna click the try now button. Now all I need to do is to enter my name and email address and I can click the download trial now button. So crossover will begin a download process. This file is 340 megabytes in size. So please wait a moment for that to complete. So once crossover has completed downloading, we're gonna to go to finder and I'm gonna open our downloads folder and we're going to open up crossover. So I'm going to double click on here and this has extracted the crossover application into the downloads folder. And then what we're going to do is to drag this into our applications folder and then let go. And now when I look at my applications folder, I'm going to scroll down and then find the crossover application. And what we're going to do here is to double click on crossover. Crossover is going to give this option menu here. We're going to press open. And then what we're going to do is press the try now button. So if you've already purchased this, what you can do is click the unlock with purchase info but today we're gonna to be using the trial. Here we're gonna press try now. So now we have entered the crossover main menu. So what we're gonna do here is to click install a Windows application and I'm gonna select the Steam application. So I'm gonna type in the word Steam and I wanna select Steam here. So when we're using what's called a cross tie, we have some tabs here, which we can just check. We can select installer and this is showing that it's downloading the Steam installer from the Codeweaver's website. If we select bottle here, we can also see that Steam is being created under a Windows 7 64-bit bottle. This is often the most compatible for most games. Here we're going to press the install and finish tab and then click the install button. So this is now downloading and installing various dependencies, including the Steam software itself, as well as various fonts and software dependencies. So this might take a little bit of time depending on the speed of your internet connection. Whenever an installer window like this pops up, just press yes. Here we're gonna press next. We need to agree to everything and press next. Here we can skip the user information and then click install. Here we're gonna click finish. So this is now the Windows Steam installer. So here we're gonna press next. We're gonna select our language. I want to install it in the default location. Now we're going to press run Steam and click finish. So here it's installing the rest of the Steam application, so just wait for this to complete. So if you don't have an account already, what you can do is click create a new account button here and you can create a free Steam account. If you have an account already, then click the login to an existing account button. And now we're going to enter our account name and password. So now it's asking us to complete our Steam Guard authorization, so just check your email for a support code. Now we have been granted access to our Steam account, we're going to press finish. So it's saying here that the installation of Steam has completed, just press the done button here. So as you can see, Steam has now loaded up and we have the Windows version of Steam. You can tell because minimize and maximize buttons come from the Windows interface of this launcher. They don't have the macOS interface, which would be the red and yellow and green button on the top left instead. So now that we've installed Steam, we can go ahead and install and launch any Windows game, which is not normally available on the Mac operating system. So the next thing to be aware of is that if you want to enable DirectX 10 or DirectX 11 games to work, we're gonna to have to enable DXVK. So we're gonna control click on our Steam bottle here. We're gonna mouse over the settings menu here and we're gonna click on DXVK backend for D3D11. So this allows DirectX 10 and DirectX 11 support in the bottle. So I'm gonna click this now. So if you don't have this enabled, then any software launched is gonna to default to the Wine D3D backend, which is gonna have different compatibility. It's probably going to work worse and be less compatible than this option here. So just make sure this is ticked. I'm gonna tick this now. And if I control click on Steam again and go to settings, you'll see that this has been enabled. So in most situations, you want this enabled in order to run more modern games. So now I'm going to double click on Steam and reopen the launcher. And I'm gonna maximize this window. So here I'm gonna do a search for nobody saves the world. So I've already purchased this. If you haven't purchased this already, you can buy it through the Steam store here, and then it'll be added to your library. I'm gonna install it on Crossover here. So I'm gonna click the install button, 
and sometimes the install window does not appear when you press install. If that happens to you, you can always take this out of maximize and then check behind the Steam window whether this installer window has popped up behind it. So here I'm going to press next and install it in the default location. And this is going to take a little bit of time to download, so just let that complete. So now that Nobody Saves the World has finished downloading, I'm going to go ahead and press the play button here. It's saying here controller is recommended. So here I've got my Xbox One wireless controller attached via Bluetooth. And we can see that we have the DXVK HUD on the left and we're running at 120 frames per second in the menu. What I'm going to do is to go down to the options menu here and we can see here that the screen mode is set to window. I'm going to put this to full screen and press OK and apply. And then this has gone into full screen mode. And as you can see, I'm going to pick up where I left off on the Steam Cloud. This is my save game from then. So we can see that we're sticking at around 120 FPS. 100 FPS, let's see how the combat is. So it does drop down to around 70, 80 FPS, which is not too bad. GPU is hardly being used in this particular game. It's going to play a little bit more just to see what it's like. There isn't any stutter, but uh, and it feels pretty smooth. So it's hard to say whether playing this on crossover or parallels is better. Of course, crossover is substantially cheaper than parallels. And this seems to work pretty well. So it does drop a little bit in frame rate. So it does go about 60 FPS. So for most games like this, you don't really need 120 frames per second. You can stick with a solid 60 and that's gonna be a good experience. So this shouldn't be a very demanding game. And you know we're running Windows via our compatibility layer. So this is not too bad an experience. We don't have the overhead of running this on you know, the whole Windows operating system in the background. I can see that the frame rate does drop into the 40s. So it's not perfect, but it's not too bad either. So, that is, so this is what gameplay looks like on this particular game running through Crossover. If you'd like to find out more about games that are compatible for the M1 Apple Silicon Mac, then please make sure to check out the M1 Compatible Games Master List. I'll leave a link to this in the description. This contains a really long list of games which are compatible through the M1 Apple Silicon Mac, whether it's running natively through ARM, through Rosetta 2, or one of the compatibility layers such as Crossover or Parallels. So please check it out. I'll leave a link to this in the description. Please also make sure to check out the Apple Gaming Wiki YouTube channel. This contains a playlist of game benchmarks that I performed on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac, and there are literally hundreds of games which I've tested. So please check this out. I'll leave a link to this in the description as well. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful. I've got lots of other Mac gaming tutorials on my YouTube channel, so please check it out. If you liked the video, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.